good morning and welcome to this lecture in last lecture we saw the relationship between x y z and r theta y coordinate so i can write x is equal to r sin theta cos phi so this is a cartesian coordinate system this is spherical coordinate system then i can write x as a function of r theta phi right i will assume that there are some quantities u1 u2 and u3 and i can write x as a function of u1 u2 u3 y as a function of u1 u2 u3 and z as a function of u1 u2 u3 so this u1 u2 u3 are the coordinates of curvilinear coordinate system u1 u2 u3 are coordinates of curvilinear coordinate system system similarly we will go here again you can see i can write r is equal to root of x square plus y square plus z square so i can write r as a function of x y z right so here you can see x is a function of r theta phi r is a function of x y z so here also i can write u1 as a function of x y z u2 is a function of x y z coordinates u3 is a function of x y z coordinates these equations and this equation are transformation equations okay these are the transformation equations between cartesian coordinate system and curvilinear coordinate system what is a curvilinear coordinate system curvilinear coordinate system is a general coordinate system okay there are many type of coordinate system and if you want to visualize curvilinear coordinate system we have to assume that there is some general coordinate system which with the help of whose you can go to some particular coordinate system like cartesian coordinate system cylindrical coordinate system spherical coordinate system now we will move further as you know x in cartesian coordinate system x is some constant that is one plane y is constant that is another plane and z is equal to constant is third plane and intersection of these planes okay there was a diagram like this you must remember x y z you can recall it there was a plane and this was another plane okay and there was a vertical plane whose intersection was point p right whose coordinates were x y z so these are these planes similarly in curvilinear coordinate system i can write u1 constant okay then u2 
equal to constant these are the equation of plane and u3 is some constant they all are representing planes in curvilinear coordinate system these are the planes in curvilinear coordinate system curvilinear coordinate system okay now the intersection of these planes okay in cartesian coordinate system we saw the intersection of planes gives us coordinate lines similarly here also the intersection of these planes okay two planes maybe between this intersection of this and intersection of these two planes will give us a coordinate line now in this case curvilinear coordinate system okay it is not necessary that it be a line it might be a curve and the surfaces which are represented by these equations may not necessarily planes it might be just surfaces of any shape okay shape and the lines of intersection of these planes or these surfaces need not be the straight lines they might be the curves because this is general coordinate system now we will move further the surface on which u1 is constant is called u1 surface on surface on which u2 is constant is called u2 surface and on surface on which u3 is constant is called u3 surface now the surface when intersect each other there will be coordinate lines on one line one coordinate will be constant and third one will be variable like if u1 and u2 intersect each other then u1 u2 will be constant u1 u2 will be constant and u3 will be variable now consider there is a point in a coordinate system say cartesian coordinate system whose coordinates are x y z now i can write the position vector of that point with respect to origin that will be x i cap y j cap z k cap now as you know the transformation equation between x and u1 u2 u3 is like this similarly for y u1 u2 u3 and z is a function of u1 u2 and u3 so i can write it here x u1 u2 u3 i cap plus y u1 u2 u3 j cap plus z as a function of u1 u2 u3 k cap here you can see r is a function of x y z right r is dependent on x y z but x y z are dependent on u1 u2 u3 so i can write r is a function of u1 u2 and u3 now suppose there is a some change in r1 r is a position vector of point p in cartesian coordinate system now there is some change in r1 that change suppose dr okay like the point is moving from one position to another by vector dr okay then i can write dr bar is equal to this is a vector that's why i'm putting bar on it okay 
that will be dr by by deba r bar by deba u1 du1 plus deba r bar by deba u2 du2 plus deba r bar by deba u3 du3 so what i did here is i wrote complete derivative in terms of partial derivative first term deba r bar by deba u1 represent change in u1 direction similarly second term deba r bar by deba u1 u2 represent change in u2 direction and deba r bar by deba u3 represent change in u3 direction so let us take a example you have some function so f is a function of x and y then if you want to write if you want to write a partial derivative with respect to x you will write deba f by deba x right if you want to write with respect to y then you will write deba f by deba y this will represent change in function f in x direction or you can imagine it as tangent drawn at some point okay in x direction similarly deba f by deba y represent change in f in y direction if you want to write a complete derivative of function f then you will write it as deba f by deba x dx plus deba f by deba y dy i have done similar thing here right but here you can see r bar is a vector so if in this case f is a vector then everywhere i have to put bar on it so it will look like this so this has a similar form okay i just wrote complete derivative in terms of partial derivative further as i told this is a vector so dab by u1 okay dab r bar by dab by u1 this is also vector i can write it as dab r bar by dab u1 some even cap this is unit vector along u1 direction this is some constant if okay if you have a bar some vector then i can write a bar as mod of a bar some unit vector which is in the direction of a bar here a bar is magnitude right and n cap is unit vector along along the direction of a bar right along the direction of a bar similar thing i have done here you can see deba r bar by deba u1 there is a r bar that's why it is a vector it must have some direction that direction is contained in this unit vector even cap and this is its magnitude similarly i can write deba r bar by deba u2 okay i will write it here deba r bar by deba u2 is equal to this and some unit vector e2 which is in this direction of deba r bar by deba u2 similarly i can write deba r bar by deba u3 is equal to dr bar by deba u3 deba r bar by deba u3 e3 cap now i will carry this equation on next page okay. 
going to carry it here this one so I can write it as double r bar is equal to I'm sorry the complete derivative dr bar is equal to deba r bar by deba u1 du1 plus deba r bar by deba u2 du2 plus deba r bar by deba u3 du3 now i will write this equation as summation in terms of summation so i can write it as summation running over i is equal to 1 to 3 deba r bar by deba ui dui okay so you can see if i vary the value of i summation means you are going to add over these terms with varying value of I. So this is tab r bar. So I will call this equation star and in next lecture we will start with this. Thank you.